All right, today I'm going to be doing like no input mixing. And then I have that out into my laptop through my horrible focus rate, um, Scarlet 2i2. And then from there, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna make a cassette loop um, out of this cassette. And then I'm gonna run that back into my computer, into a song. If you don't already know about no input mixing, <clears throat> essentially what I'm doing, so I'm taking patch cables and I'm going from the inputs back into the outputs of the mixer. So it like creates a feedback loop from like the internal amplifiers of the mixer. So now we got track one back into track one, track two into the send, um, and then track six or five and six and 11 and 12 put into the main output all like consolidated into track two, all the other stuff, except for five and six, but I, I move the knob and nothing really changes. Do I know why this sounds the way it does? Absolutely not. <clears throat> so essentially what we got is this like kind of horrible high pitch noise, right? What I'm doing is I'm gonna record it and I'm gonna take the volume knob Now I have that kind of horrible descending noise uh, recorded into Ableton. So I was actually gonna make um, a tape loop with this fresh tape that I got, but um, you know, you would need a measuring tape and like screwdriver and stuff, but I'm missing um, like the most important part, which is clear tape because um, I think this guy knocked it somewhere strange. So, now I have my tape loop right here. You can see it's like, I got it wrapped around in like the, I think the eight and a half second formation or whatever. You can look this stuff up online. Maybe I'll make like a different video showing you how to do this. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I got that. I got some aluminum foil, which I'll show you what for in a second. And then my headphones are plugged straight into the tape machine. And my interface is sending my laptop into track one from like the back outputs. So the tin foil, um, essentially like you have your different tape heads, right? There's the erase head, I think the record head, uh, I don't even remember what all three of them do. The erase head is like the most important one right now. The erase head makes it so like when you loop back around on the cassette, it erases anything before it. So if I, oh shit. If I take some aluminum foil and cover it, it's gonna make sure that nothing erases meaning that if it'll re keep recording over itself and kind of make like a delay kind of um, sound, if that makes sense. Make sure to not to only use aluminum foil. If you use like plastic tape, you'll like strip the tape and stuff. Like don't, not plastic tape, clear tape. Just use aluminum foil. So now I'm just like playing the sound through to see if like the levels aren't clipping too crazy. Um, God, it's so dusty. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press play and record and just keep pressing um, stop and play over and over again on my laptop. Um, so it actually wasn't feeling busy enough with just track one. So I put it onto all like track one through three. And now there's like, you know, a bunch of them going. And then I'm going to take the pitch control. And then if I want, I can kind of press down the tape heads lightly. I recommend not doing this. See, it's kind of like destroying the quality. Yeah, so that's like a fun little, or you can wiggle it. Damages the tape heads. I recommend not doing it. I like doing that. So essentially what I did just now, I'm gonna play the finished project in a second, but um, I just let the loop play into Ableton right here and like played the song and then just used like the volume knob to like have it come in and out when I felt like it. I'm gonna film like a fun little video to put it to right now and then you'll hear it. <laughs> 